This is God at his best. We rejoice because of him. I've said before, we sing praises to him. We worship him for who he is. We praise him for what he's done and what he continues to do. The sermon today is live the life you sing about. Live the life you sing about. There's a, uh, Hunter, you can go to the next one. On old, it says, of or relating to the latter part of life or term of existence of a person or thing. The latter part of life, old, you, it's been around, it's been around. Well, let me tell you, your flesh has been around. Your flesh has been around, it's, it's, it's old, let me just tell you. And I don't care, and I don't mean by in the, in the physical term when you say old, I mean in the spiritual, it's old, it needs to be transformed. It has to be transformed, you've got to welcome it. New, meaning of recent origin, production, purchase, having but lately come or been brought into being. Do you realize that when you, what we stand on, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it's a new birth. It's a new birth. I tell you all the time, I don't do the whole, you know, uh, New Year's resolution thing. Every time I get a chance to, I want to be made new again because I want my mind to be renewed. It's not the spirit. My spirit has already been renewed. When you change, your spirit has been renewed, refreshed, clean, and it's, it is perfect. When folks say, oh, well, look, you know, you live the life you sing about. Well, look at them. They're a Christian, but they're acting up. They're looking at the physical only. The change is happening on the inside. Folks get too, let's just face it. Folks are just too lazy, too <laughs> lazy to look at the person on the in, on the inside they just see the outside and they see i see trash right there i see the person that harmed me last week or the week before or what have you i see the person that is still doing drugs i see the person that is still holding money back from me i see an evil person i see a person that i don't like i see this i see that but they don't see the inside they don't see the pure the cleanness of that person you realize that sometimes what people don't see, now I'm gonna go to the physical, what reason why people don't see is because there are folks that don't know the new song. Psalms 40, 30, 40 verse three says, he put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. He's put a new song in our mouth. What was going on right there is, it, it, it was just faith going through trials. In the midst of everything that was going on, he was saying, I put, he put a new song in my mouth and I'm okay. See, when we recognize what is that song that's going on, we start to want to lean towards it and hear it more. Our spirit is driven towards it. We want to hear more of that song, not that old song anymore. Not that old song that's been playing, that old sad song that people are still hearing. When they hear what I say, people are still hearing that old sad song of what you used to be. You've got to show them that new song. Do you realize that there's many Christians, and those are those, as I say, those seasoned Christians that have been around forever, and they're still singing that sad old tune. They still don't realize that they've got a new song in their heart. They are, be they are built and better and ready for greatness, but they have not opened up and realized that there is a true new song that's happening. The other day I was listening to this guy. He was asked, he was asked, uh, tell me about your, your, the, one, the woman that you love. And he said, well, she's like a, she's like a, a, a song that you love and you just keep playing it over and over and over again. I thought that was one of the most beautiful things that I could ever have heard, a description of a person that loves someone. It's like a song that you just keep, that you love, and you just keep playing it over and over and over again. That's the type of song that the Lord has placed in us. It's so beautiful that you should be listening to it and playing it over and over and over again, but not only playing it, but playing it for other people to see, other people to hear. They begin to see something new in you. They understand that there is a change that's happening and it's not on the outside. 
every year people come up and they say, well, it's the first of the year. I'm going to do something different. I want this to change in me. Well, the problem is, why weren't you doing that back then? You don't have to wait for this new year. Do you understand that these calendars that we have right now, these are just man-made calendars. We put dates out there and we try to do things based off of what we do. But you know, the Lord's time, our time is not in the Lord's time. We don't, we don't understand how his time works. It doesn't comprehend to the natural mind, this, 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 uh, this, this physical mind that we have. We can't understand that. But when you look at it from the spiritual point of view and the spiritual sense, you realize that time is different. Like I, I mentioned, all these ministries that we're just chipping away right now. There are many people that have said, well, you know, I wanted to do it right now. I, I want to go into this into this church that's already set up. They've got the choir right back here. They've got this board going and that board going and you know everything is set up. Well, guess what? This is not this church. This church is being built on God's time and things happen in his time. But let me tell you, the song keeps playing. His song keeps playing every single day. Every time we touch someone, and when I mean touch, I mean just reach out and you have an, uh, just an opportunity to speak a word of life into someone, that song is plain. His song is plain. You see, new is the opposite of old. It's time to show off the new you. It's time to show off who you really are in God. Show off what God has created in you. Many have said, you know, who they are, but they don't show it. They just don't show it. A lot of times it's because they don't know. They really don't know. They expect, as I said, they expect, they say, Lord, I accept you. You're my Lord and Savior. I'm going to give my all to you. But they really don't know giving yourself away. They really don't understand that. Amen. They don't understand that. They give just a piece. Last week I was saying, find a place. It was, uh, find a place for our father. He was sitting in a chair. It looks comfortable, but he didn't have the whole house to, to, to go through. When you open up yourself and you give yourself away, it's the whole you that has to go at, uh, before him and allow him to just dwell anywhere he wants to go. Because let's face it, he knows each and every dirty part of us. So why would you try to hide it from him? He's there to help you clean it up. He's helping you clean up. The Holy Spirit is dwelling inside, just helping you to clean up things and show you the right way. Let that song play. Let that song play. It was a song uh, that, that uh, and actually this was a title of a song that I, I, I'm, I'm one that I, I love the blues. And for whatever reason, when I was younger, uh, whenever I was feeling down, I could play the blues and I get picked up. I don't know, that's just opposite, but usually they say the blues gets you down, but it picked me up. Then I found a new song in scripture, but uh, it was B.B. King that used to say, I like to live the life I sing about in my song. This is what you have to do is live the life you sing about in God's song that was placed into you. Amen. You see, those words, I love I, I love the song. Let me rephrase that. I like the song, but I love God's song that's placed inside each and every one of us. Amen. You just got to hear it and begin to sh uh, show it. You got to hear it and then begin to show it. You know, many people, they have not come into this very knowledge of that exact being of who they are. You know, and let me, let's, let's, let's face it. You know, who doesn't like to show off something new? Who doesn't like to show off something new? I've seen folks get stuff, you know, we just had Christmas and gifts are going. And all of a sudden, you know, people are showing, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to the men, but I'm going to talk about the women. Look, look what I got right here. Look what I got right here. You know, it's, it's, it's this bling that I got, you know, oh, and the men, you know, hey, look at this. Look at this, what I got, you know, some clothes or whatever. People like to show stuff that's new. I remember growing up, you know, we got clothes once um once a year, it was right before school is when we would get clothes. And so when we get clothes, I'm like, you know, I, I get it, uh, those clothes, and school hadn't started. And I'm like the first one ready to put them on. My parents are like, no, 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 you're not messing that up before you go because you're not going to get anything. This is going to have to hold you. But I was ready to show off what was new. Who doesn't like to show off what is new? Why is it that we don't want to show off what is new in us, that new creation that is inside you? Go and show it off. Don't be ashamed about it. Go out there and just share your faith. Share God with people. Share Christ with people. Don't let them see you just going, you know, oh, and I, and I tell people, oh, that's that sad old song they're playing. That's why they're walking like this. You know, they, they just can't seem to just, you know, say, you know what? The Lord has been good to me. Guess what? I'm walking. Guess what? I'm walking. This is a new 
year for each and every one of you. This is a new day. Start this day. Don't worry about the year. Start this day. This is a day of praise. This is why I said earlier that I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful for everything. When I reflect back on what where we started, you know, we started outside in a park. We started outside in the park about almost four years ago. And I remember that first sermon. It wasn't my first sermon that I preached, but it was my first sermon in this church. And I remember I opened up and I'm ready. And all of a sudden, every, every uh, sermon that I had just flew. The wind just took it out, just flew all over. Well, look at this. We're inside beautiful walls right now, holding back the wind right now. God is good. This is something to rejoice about. This is something that you can rejoice about because this is your church. As I've always said, and what's said on this, this is God's church. Amen. God's church is not my church. Amen. I'm just a servant. You are just servants here. Right. We are sent here right now just to serve him. See, that's the difference when we understand the ownership structure. And that's what's coming down in, in Bible study uh, not Bible study, but in, in our group fellowship, we're gonna we're gonna learn more about who's the real owner. You know, we're just the we're we're the ones that the the, uh, the custodians of his property, the custodians of his property. But you yourself understand, you are his property. This church is his property. He will be he will be the leader forever and ever and ever. I don't follow what I'm doing. The board knows they. <laughs> You know, they, they give a tremendous amount of trust, but believe me, it's not the trust in me. Some folks get that really twisted. There are some pastors that get that really twisted. Like, oh, they, they trust me. It's not the trust in me. It's the trust in God. It's the trust that God is leading me and showing me what needs to be done. But folks seem to say, there's some folks that say, well, this is mine. Well, that's not the song that God put in their heart. Believe me, that's not the song that God has put in their hearts. That's what flesh has put there. Flesh has said, it's yours. You can take this. You can tell them what to do. That's not how this, this church is not run that way. And it will not be run that way. It has to be God's song is playing all the time. We've got to proclaim his name and allow others to show who we are as a church body, who you are as a church. You are a church. Show who he is. Not the flesh, but the spirit that's in you, fighting the flesh. Every day, fighting the flesh back, trying to just overcome that filthy, dirty flesh. What did I say last week about finding a place? Our father came into this world, into this trough, basically, this manger, which, y'all, well, I'm not going to rehash that, but it was a, a trough, if you look at it, placed there, unsanitary, but still unsanitary, and still decided, I'm going to send my spirit to stay within you, unsanitary, unclean person, I will send my spirit to dwell with you, inside of you. Isn't that something right there? That's something to rejoice, say praise God and a hallelujah for it, because it is an awesome, awesome thing to know that you are loved that much. Do you realize most people wouldn't even, if you have a certain odor to you, if you have a certain look to you where there's dirt around you, most people will not even take the time out for you. They will not even take that time out to even minister to you. It's not that you have to go up and wrap your arms around them or do anything like that, but just speak a word of life into people. Just speak a word of life into people. Some folks won't do that because they're playing that sad old song and they haven't seen the new song that God has given. They don't understand the new song. They don't even know the words to the new song, so they're still trying to figure things out. That's a sad state right there. Amen. That's a sad state right there. We've got to change. We've got to change. God has given us that 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 strength, that oomph, that uh, everything that we can to change. He's given us all these tools. We've got to let go of certain things. We've got to let go of certain things. Live the life that God placed in your heart and the spirit and just let it fill your soul. Let it fill your soul up. That's another thing that, I, you know, it's so funny. I was teaching in Bible study about the, the spirit, the body, and the soul. And, I was told I, it, it was shocking, but it was not shocking in a sense. The folks still, that for whatever reason, they forget about the soul. We talk about so many other things, but we forget about the soul. Well, guess what? We need to acknowledge that you are body, spirit, and soul. That's something that we'll be t talking more about and teaching more of because that's the complete you. That is the complete you. I told you this is a little different. I'm not going and, and Hunter, as I said, we're probably not going to hit all that, but it's 
it in all the scriptures, but the realization is you've got to sing, you've got to sing his song. You've got to know that new song that's been placed in you. It says, uh, Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the earth. We've got to elevate. You have got to elevate. You cannot keep sitting here thinking that, well, this is all there has to be. This is what this, this is all that is to me. Do you realize there are people out there that are just flourishing in the, in the flesh? They are making money. They are buying nice cars. They're doing all different things. But I think, what did I say before? It's almost like a high school quarterback or that cheerleader who was, you know, head of the cheerleading team or that, whatever that is. These people that are doing, some of them, they've reached their peak, just like the high school quarterback. They reached their peak. That's the best that they will ever be. That's a sad state when you think about it spiritually. Right now, they're flourishing. They're thinking life is good and life is grand. But guess what? What about after? That is the best that they will ever be right here on earth. And God allows that for certain folks because he knows that's the best that they'll ever be. That's a sad state. That's a sad state. But the realization is, and, and it's not just, it's not God only because we know that, you know, the devil has his, his ways into things. He allows these things. He's, he's showing people, hey, he's dangling these things in front of them. And then they're just accepting. You know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, um, just, just taking the throw out a little bait. He just throws out a little bait and then we just run towards that bait and we say, oh, this is what I want. This is what I need. Not realizing that there's so much more, so much grand, grander than what is right here but they've reached their peak. They will never go on. They never learn the song. They never learn the song and they stay stuck. They stay stuck. That high school quarterback that's, that peaked in high school and then sometimes you look at them all in their life in their 40s. It was uh, this, this one show I was watching, the guy who was you know, nicely fit and everything and all of a sudden he lost his hair in his 40s or 50s or whatever it was and then all of a sudden he's not the same, the body is not the same and he still has the same dream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there one day, I'm going to get there but he was working in this job that really he felt like it was beneath him but at the end of the day that's all that he could do because he reached his peak in high school. He couldn't do anything else. He reached his peak way back then. Well, guess what? I don't want any of you to say, I've reached my peak right here and I'm not going to do anything else. This is the best that I'm ever going to be is right here on earth. The best that you ever sh will be is with God, is yeah. with God. It's not going to be right here. Don't think for a moment that this is the best because there is so much more to come, so much more to come. People say revelations, oh, that's the end of the book. No, that's a revelation. That is a revelation of what is to come. Yes. There are things that you need to understand. There are more things to come. What I see when I see the, these, these chairs right here, and I love that there are more people that are gathered here, but I also see in the spiritual where we are not right here. We are not right here. There is more to come. He has more in store. And each day that we keep working his assignment and keep singing his song that he's placed in us, we keep growing and growing and growing. You get stronger and stronger and stronger, not only in him, but you get stronger right here, right here. And you are doing things in the physical that no one would ever understand. They don't ever understand. How are they able to do this? It's amazing what this church has been has been through and has done in this short amount of time when i sit back and reflect when i sit back and reflect it's like oh, thank you lord hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for all that you keep providing and keep moving in your children keep moving in them and showing them the way there are more people out there. There's more family out there that's coming. You guys haven't met them yet. I have not met them in the physical, but they're coming. They're still coming. They're opening doors. They're peeking in, wondering what's going on, what is new in there. Well, we got to show them. We've got to show them and live the life that we sing about. Psalms 96, 1, 3 says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nation, his nations, his wonders among all peoples. We've got to declare things. It is no longer acceptable for us to just sit back and just say, well, it, you know, it might happen. It could happen. You've got to declare it 
right now in the spiritual so it will manifest itself in the physical. You've got to declare there has to be a change and it has to start with inside of you that you start to realize that God is in control. God will make things happen and God will rise to the occasion each and every time that you need him to. He has already set things in works in, in, in your path. You've just got to follow it. You've got to stop saying, you know what, I'm not sure, Lord. Submit to him and let him show you a better way. Let him show you a new way because he did place a new song in you. And you will be able to speak to many people that you never thought that you would speak to. I know our elder is online right now, and I remember he, sh he shared this with me. He says he was told a long time ago he would speak to other nations. He would speak to people all over the world. He did not realize, as he told me, he didn't realize how it was going to happen. Well, guess what? Every time that we speak right here, do you realize there are folks right now that are in Pakistan, India, that are listening to this? They listen to this later on. There are folks that are in Africa that are listening to this, and I, they send messages here to me. This is what is happening. We are proclaiming his name to all the nations just as he has instructed us to. Amen. We follow him. We follow him. His word is going out. This is why I can't say, well, what's contained in this room? You know, you can't contain God in this room right here. He's too big of a God. He's too big of a God. You cannot contain him in this room, and he will not be contained by this flesh right here. Won't allow it. Won't allow my flesh to rule like that. You shouldn't allow yours either. Amen. Your flesh needs to be overruled by your spirit. Your flesh needs to be overruled by your spirit. Let that song come out. Let your spirit hear that song and just flourish on that song. Feast on that song. That song that is so sweet, so sweet, so sweet. As I close here with 1 Peter 4, 11, it says, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. We are all called. Every, every single one of you are all called. What is your assignment, though? Figure that out. You are all called to glorify our Father. Go out and do it. Sing that song. Sing that song full of praise. Sing that song as loud as you can. Sing that song like no one else before. You have been given that song. Figure out what that song is. Figure out what that song is and love it just as that old song, whatever song that it, it was that you love so much. Love it like that so it just plays over and over and over again in your, in your spirit, in your heart, and in your mind because it has to come out from within. You have to let it out. You've got to release. This is what I was talking about, a release earlier. Now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When I was saying earlier, we were praising God and all I saw was release. There are things that have to be released from people right now. You are holding things inside of you. You are holding things that are holding you back from the good things that you so rightly deserve that God has in store for you. You've got to release these things. You've got to let that song play out and hear that song so you can release. Whatever it is that release is, you've got to release it. You've got to release it. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you right now for this time, Lord. I thank you right now for just allowing, just placing a new song in our, in our hearts, Lord, placing a new song in our spirits, Lord, placing just that new song that we can just share with each and every one of your children, whoever comes in contact with us right now. Lord, I, I know right now there's a release that needs to happen right now, Lord. I know that there is someone that's being blinded right now, Lord. They are being held up by the enemy right now, Lord. And I just speak release over them right now, Lord. I ask that you just have your way right now inside of them, Lord. Open them up, Lord, and just share them your love. Share with them your love, Lord. Whatever that release is, Lord, there is someone right now that's battling. There's a mental battle that's happening right now with them, Lord. I ask that you just open them up, Lord. Release that mental, that mental. Release, 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 release. Take away that pain from them right now, Lord. I ask that you just have your weight with inside. Open up their minds, Lord. Take away that pain that they're having, that struggling that they're having, Lord. Lord, I ask that that stumbling block that's being placed with inside, in front of people, Lord, that it just be removed, Lord, that they see nothing but you. I ask that that song just is so loud within them, Lord, that it just overpowers anything else that the enemy has against them, Lord. No weapon formed right now, Lord. We bind those weapons away, Lord. 
We loosen what has gotten in. We loosen and bind it so it never, never returns, Lord. Lord, I ask for your presence inside. I ask for your presence outside. I ask for your presence all around, a hedge of protection all around your children, Lord. Let your will be done with them, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just have your way, Lord. I ask for you to have your way. Let us see a clear, cleaner path, Lord. Straighten our paths, Lord. Straighten our paths. What are our steps? What are our steps? What are our steps? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.